So thankfully the effects page is a little bit more simple than the expert or options view. We're going to have a look at the master switch first here and this basically turns off all of the effects on this page or turns them on. It's just a way for you to just bypass everything whilst you edit perhaps the rotor cabinet or options settings and then bring back the effects later. This is kind of like the final touches on the instrument sound. So you can also do that for the pedal. So just like we had for the, uh, the uh, click settings here in the options panel, we can turn off the click settings for the pedal. We can also do that for the effects. So we can bypass the effects for the pedal or we can turn the effects on for the pedal. So here, everything here will affect the pedal notes as well when we're in that split view or using a real MIDI organ controller or we can bypass it and get a clean bass sound. This section is the reverb setting and you can turn that on or off and you can set it to pre or post. Pre basically means pre the rotor cabinet. So if you listen to this, we've got the rotor cabinet on fast and we're hearing the rotor cabinet before we go to reverb. Let's make it really large and obvious. It's pretty subtle, but if I switch this, now we're gonna be hearing the rotor cabinet and then the reverb. Whereas here we hear the rotor cabinet first and then the reverb's patched in later. So essentially the reverb is affecting the rotor cabinet sound, either pre or post. So here you can also change the type of reverb. We have a number of presets here and we also have a spring reverb, which is quite poetic because the guy who invented the Hammond organ also invented the spring reverb. It's the classic sound. And you can change the level here. Next, we have the equalizer, which you can turn off or on. And this works like most equalizers. You have an output level. You can change your lows, mids, and highs. We have wah-wah settings, which have a number of different presets here. And if we set it to classic wah, you'll hear that sound. Actually, you won't hear that sound because what we need to do is we want to be able to control this setting via uh, one of our controllers here. Now, you'll remember, hopefully, from our presets that our morph slider, which is currently on our modulation wheel, is controlling going through our presets. But if we go, uh, wrong window, if we go to here and we click mod wheel, what this does is it actually overwrites that preset, uh, sorry, that controller, so that now we're no longer controlling, I'm moving, you have to believe me, I'm moving my mod wheel now and nothing's happening with the upper morph. But it is controlling our wah, so have a listen to this. Really, really cool sound. Really, really cool sound there. And you can change that to be anything that you want. Uh, and you can change the settings, the range of the wah. So here's a minimal wah here. And then here is a ridiculously loud and wide wah. And the bite is just an extra setting, a bit like resonance. So then we have distortion on, off. You can change the tone of it and you can change the amount of it, which is the drive. Brighter, darker, and you have a number of different presets here. Okay, so that's the effects window. We're gonna dive into the expert window now. Okay, so the expert window is where stuff gets really, really crazy and deep and probably pretty pedantic if I'm honest, but it's useful to know if you're really, really into getting a perfect, perfect organ sound. So you're very, very welcome to skip over this chapter. There's not loads here that you're gonna necessarily need. You can get everything that you want pretty much to get so much variety in sound in these four windows. This is rather, rather specific. So uh, you'll notice that I brought up the Logic Tuner here, and then you can get to this. You can insert this in any um, either audio or instrument track, and it will give you the exact pitch, and help you understand what's going on. And I brought that up so that we can understand this pitch section. So uh, the, uh, the normal Hammond B3 without these settings is set to an equal tempered scale, which basically means that every note's equal as you go up the octave, uh, as you go up, sorry, through the higher frequencies of the instrument. But what you can do is emulate the kind of behavior or characteristics of the tuning of real pianos and such so that the higher notes on the piano are ever so slightly tuned higher just to give a brightness and same with the lower notes. So let's uh, show you how this works. What we have to do though is go over to the main window and make sure that we're only using the higher uh, frequencies here. And I'm gonna make it simple. I'll just pull in my uh, the that drawbar there and let's have a little listen. So if I play a high 
f we see that we're basically in tune you can forget about this minus one cent that is essentially it should be in tune uh, and then if i push this uh upper stretch up this gives us a bit more deviation ever so slightly i think the maximum you can do is seven cents You can hardly hear it, very, very subtle. And then the lower stretch is for the lower frequency. So if we bring in a lower key there, and maybe so you can hear it a bit better. We've got a normal F. If we go back to expert view, we can stretch them down and you can see that RF has gone down nine cents here as well. So uh, let's bring in kind of a regular setting or a more obvious setting. Now warmth basically does this slightly randomly and it gives it a bit more realism. So here, if I just play one note, it would be a, bit, a lot clearer. So C, kind of changing a little bit. And then we get a sharper one and a lower one. So it kind of, this is all normal. And then if we bring it all the way up, the astute of you will know that that's actually slightly, slightly changing it. Uh, pitch bend up basically changes how much our pitch bend wheel is going to affect stuff. So there we're going to be up an octave. If I move my pitch wheel and pitch bend down is the same thing. So if I actually just want my uh, pitch bend to take us, say, like a minor third, I can set it here to three semitones and then... Yeah, so you can change that there. So sustain is basically the decay time of each manual. So you can change this. So currently we're going to be on the upper manual. And here you can hear that I'm changing. So I'm actually getting a decay. I'm only hitting my note very briefly, but there's a long decay time. You can do this independently with the lower upper manual or the pedals as well. You notice there's a de default setting of 10 milliseconds, probably to do with something uh, of, of that's characteristic of normal tone wheel organs. So in the miscellaneous section, you can choose your uh, preset for actual hardware controllers. So if you actually have, for example, the Nord Electro uh, C-Series um, uh, or any of these other ones here, Logic has actually created presets specific for that Hammond organ controller. So you can choose those there. So the condition setting is where we get into the nitty gritty of the uh, the specific sounds of this instrument, uh, like the click, the uh, draw bar leak and uh, random FM stuff. So let's talk about the click uh, maximum and minimum here. So uh, I've changed sound and we've got a click uh, active on the options window up at its maximum setting. And we uh, go back to expert and we'll have a little listen. And if I turn these up, we get the full click. But basically, between these two sliders, so let's say the click at its minimum will be 5 milliseconds, and the click at its maximum will be 20 milliseconds, there's going to be a, a random variation between these two settings. So you can, if you set these up here, you're going to say essentially to the instrument, hey, I want all my clicks to be as long as possible, and you'll give me a random variation between these. Um, there will always be a little bit of variation. Again, it's very subtle. Look, if I turn this right down to one millisecond. I don't know about you, but I'm hardly noticing anything. Um, but there you go. Um, click color, again, is another one of those real, real uh, nuanced things. You can change the color of the click it's sound itself and in terms of its frequency. So higher frequency clicks, lower frequency clicks. You can change the filter age as well. It gives an interesting sound. Slightly dull around the edges. Um, leakage is an interesting one. Basically what that means is that you're gonna have a tiny bit of leakage from the main draw bars to each other. So let's have a little listen. It's very, very subtle, but it gives you a kind of breathy quality. Hey, I've actually realized that I'm on the wrong channel EQ here, so we can't see anything that's happening. Sorry about that, guys. Let's have a little look at this now. See whether we can see anything. Probably not, it's very subtle. No, you can't see anything, but you can hear a tiny bit of high end coming in. So the next one, draw bar leak, is very similar, but it's kind of crosstalk to an extent between, well, not exactly crosstalk, but between these draw bars. If I show you what happens here, if I turn these all down, you can still hear a note, particularly if I turn that up. And that means that we're still hearing all of these draw bars, but at a quieter level. And it's kind of emulating the natural thing that happens in Hammond organs. But if we turn this down, we genuinely can't hear anything, although our tuning is 
showing us that there's something happening, but believe me, there's no signal coming through here. So I'm gonna turn that off to stop being confused. Okay, so then we come to the organ model part of this. So Maximum Wheels is talking about the uh, essentially the emulation power of it. So set it at 91 for full quality, uh, emulating 91 uh, wheels inside of the instrument. But as you turn this down, you can hear I'm only using one of the tone wheels inside. And then we get more, and then up here as well. So obviously if I'm just playing one note, I can't, I'm going up my keyboard in a scale, and that's to do with the way that the um, Hammond organ works with its tone wheel generators. Here, if I increase it, starting to sound a bit more like a scale, and then if I turn it up more, it's sounding a lot better. So just basically keep this at 91. It doesn't impact CPU. If you're finding that there are issues with it and you must be having, you must have a very, very uh, old computer, uh, in which case you can turn this down, but just keep it at 91. So tonal balance is to do basically with uh, the tonal balance between the upper and lower, uh, sorry, that the higher and lower frequencies inside of the upper manual. If we have a little listen to this, so slightly shifts it towards the high end and slightly shifts it towards the low end. It's a bit like a very subtle EQ. Uh, again, you can do that with EQs, really almost no need to come in here. Lower uh, affects the volume of the lower drawbars, so currently we're not gonna hear anything here. Uh, we'd have to switch back uh, in our split view for that. So let's go to split, make sure that we've got enough space in our lower. So we're currently in lower. And let's go to this. We can change the volume of the lower. Sorry guys, it's a bit loud. Pedals volume uh, is the same idea. So if we make sure that we're playing in pedals here, we can change the volume independently for the pedals. And uh, then we can do shape, and shape is basically the uh, sound of the inner sine wave for each one. So if you move it away from that central point, oh sorry, we need to change back to our uh, single view so that we're only playing the upper manual. Very subtly change the wave shape of that manual. And then bass filter is uh, a similar thing, but just for the bass part. So let's split, make sure that we're playing the bass. Keep it nice and thin, uh, keep it nice and deep with hardly any uh, higher frequencies. You can see that the frequencies coming in and that nice crunchy sound of the internal mechanics, which I love. And then ultra bass adds a bit of bass to everything, even lower really, really, really low bass going on there. Okay, so a huge amount of information there. I hope this series on the Vintage B3 has been useful to you. I'll see you guys in the next video.